gentle and of course very modern apes, a new paper out of the Royal Society has recently come to my attention, and it may shed some light on the chimpanzee stone age. Yeah, that's right, they're in their stone age. Titled Identifying Functional and Regional Differences in Chimpanzee Stone Tool Technology, Prof and colleagues point out that there are some interesting cultural aspects to how chimpanzee groups make tools. And I'd like to take a minute to talk a bit about their findings and the implications that they may have for human evolution and our understanding of other primates. Chimpanzees, that is to say members of genus Pan, are our closest living relatives today, sharing 98.8% of our DNA, and when comparing whole genomes, 96%. That's closer than African and Asian elephants share, or lions and tigers. And just like humans, Panans, or members of genus Pan, find themselves in the unique position of belonging to a very exclusive club in the animal kingdom, tool users with culture. Today, it is pretty well appreciated that apes other than humans utilize tools, but this was not always the case. Back in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, Louis Leakey, a prominent anthropologist at the time, commissioned Jane Goodall, Diane Fossey, and Beirut Galdikas to research chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans, respectively. And when Jane Goodall reported back, Tool use in chimpanzees, Louis Leakey famously said, We must redefine tool, redefine man, or accept chimpanzees as human. This is, of course, a very grand statement to make, but at the time, no other animals had been seen to use tools. It was only humans. Man the tool maker was the common phrase that you would hear thrown around, and was seen as what separated us from the rest of the animal kingdom. It was, of course, known that humans could teach other animals to use tools, but seeing a tool user organically in the wild without human input was a big game changer as far as our understanding of our place in nature. Of course, now we know that a great many other animals utilize tools. There are, of course, the other apes, but outside of the hominids, we see different types of monkeys utilizing tools, cetaceans like dolphins and whales, proboscideans, the elephants, and of course, tons and tons of types of very intelligent bird. A tool is very simply an object in an animal's environment that is utilized to achieve some kind of goal that the animal could not achieve on its own. Sometimes tools are objects that are manipulated, that is to say they are altered from their original form, but they don't necessarily have to be. They do, however, need to show some kind of repeated intent. That is to say, the tool needs to be used to achieve the same or similar goals multiple times in a row. Jane Goodall had observed chimpanzees fishing for termites. They would take pieces of grass, sometimes alter them by partially stripping them, and dip them into the holes of the termite mound, whereby the termites would then bite the piece of grass, and when the chimpanzee would pull it back out, they had a delicious snack ready to eat. However, this termite fishing behavior isn't just figured out by every individual chimpanzee, they learn by watching one another, and mothers teach their youngsters how to perform this very special technique. And that is all culture is. It's a certain behavior that is passed down through generations from parent to offspring. And termite fishing isn't the only type of tool use and behavior combo that is passed down from chimpanzee generation to chimpanzee generation. They also utilize tools to harvest honey, they utilize rocks to crack open different types of nuts, and they even sharpen sticks with their teeth, a tool that they utilize in hunting. 
And importantly, the tools are not arbitrarily selected. In the case of this photo from the Leakey Foundation that you can see on your screen now, we see that different sticks of different length and width are utilized for different types of fishing and collection of resources. There's different types of sticks for honey collection, depending on whether it's on the ground or up in the trees, for different types of ant harvesting, depending on the depth of the nest. This indicates that chimpanzees have an understanding of tools that are best used for specific jobs, and thus they hunt out tools that are going to meet the needs of the task at hand, whether it's fishing for termites and ants, or climbing up into a tree to get a little taste of honey. But today's paper focuses specifically on the use of rocks to crack open nuts, a classic example of chimpanzee tool use, and one that is actually a bit more complicated than it seems. In identifying functional and regional differences in chimpanzee stone tool technology, they note that the primary goal here is to provide a robust descriptive and quantitative characterization of chimpanzee stone tools, allowing for meaningful comparisons between chimpanzee groups and with archaeological artifacts. So the goal here is to basically quantify the dimensions of different types of stone tools that have been observed being used by chimpanzees in order to clock the characteristics so that if we find them in the absence of chimpanzees, we can tell that it's a stone tool used for cracking a specific type of nut. This is important for two reasons. One, because it allows us to compare the stone tool usage between groups of chimpanzees and to also look into the past and see when certain types of stone technology may have emerged in the hominins. Now, obviously this is, or should be appreciated, that chimpanzee groups utilize different types of toolboxes depending on where they live. So not all chimpanzees use stones to crack open nuts. Not all chimpanzees use different types of sticks to fish for ants or for termites. And in fact, in this paper in 2020 that you can see now titled Environmental Variability Supports Chimpanzee Behavioral Diversity, they looked at data sets of 144 wild chimpanzee communities and showed that chimpanzees exhibit greater behavioral diversity in environments with more variability in both the recent and historical timescales. Two important things are important to glean from this paper as we move forward from the next. The first is that chimpanzee cultures differ in their tool use depending on their environment. Tougher, more seasonal environments lend themselves to more innovation in chimpanzee groups. And two, chimps have been doing this for a long time to the point at which they have an archeological record in the environments that they live in. So we can go to areas where current chimpanzee communities are, we can look into the ground and find tools that were used by chimpanzees 100 or 1000 years earlier. So first their goal was to test to see if they could actually figure out the difference between a hammer and an anvil in the field. So a hammer and an anvil are two aspects of nut cracking tool use that chimpanzees utilize. The hammer is the rock that slams into the nut and the anvil is the rock on which the nut sits. So this puts it between two hard rocks and allows it to be cracked open. So the first thing they were testing was to see whether or not in isolation, you could tell the difference between a hammer and an anvil. The second step was to see how the hammers and anvils in two different chimpanzee communities compared. One from Cote d'Ivoire and the other from the Republic of Guinea. Models were then generated and analyzed in cloud compare, and then a statistical analysis was applied. And to make a long story short, you can in fact tell the difference between hammers and anvils. That is the big takeaway from their first section of results. And the second section of results notes that not only can you tell the difference between hammers and anvils, but they do in fact differ slightly in the two communities that they looked at from uh, Bossau and uh, Jurautu. Juratau? They differ. That's the point. Chimpanzee communities differ in their hammer and anvils. Already, I think these results are fascinating. We knew before that there were differences in the toolboxes utilized by different groups of chimpanzees depending on where they lived. But what this study appears to show is that even when the toolboxes are similar, using rocks to crack open nuts, they do so in different ways, suggesting that many of these communities independently figured out how to utilize stones to crack open nuts, and they do so in their own unique ways, just like human cultures. But it actually gets even more interesting. As noted here in the discussion section, 
Previous studies have shown that chimpanzees preferentially select hammerstones of specific size and mass depending on the hardness of the nut species. The dimensional patterning of the Jorautau, Jorautau hammerstones is consistent with this observation. So they provided additional evidence that the tool changes depending on the task at hand, even if the tasks are very similar. So chimpanzees are able to discriminate between the hardness of the nut and the tool that will best accomplish the job. In this section here, they also note that chimpanzees use portable stone hammers. So they bring the hammer stone to the anvil and that the anvils are typically located in stationary places. So they're immovable and they're near the nut trees where the job is to be carried out. This is interesting in and of itself. And they also talk a little bit about in this section that the hammer stones and the anvils can be differentiated specifically by pitting patterns. I think this section is particularly whimsical and fascinating. It has been shown that chimpanzees possess a durable archaeological record in their own right, primarily consisting of hammerstone fragments. The large stationary or rarely moved anvils used by these chimpanzees to crack nuts possess substantial modification through use. The larger of these artifacts may take a considerable duration to fully enter the archaeological record and as such persists in the landscape as identifiable activity areas, allowing for continuous use and reuse over time. Furthermore, these artifacts will probably preserve long after the death of the associated nut trees, making them a potentially invaluable marker of past chimpanzee nut cracking behaviors in future primate archaeological endeavors at this site, which I keep mispronouncing. That's so cool, and this has interesting implications for the past, right? We may be able to actually locate these past anvils and hammerstone usage by hominins. And after a brief section here comparing the two chimpanzee communities uh, that were the focus of this study, they talk about the implication for hominin percussive technology and compare some of the characteristics of their own hammerstones and anvils to those that have been clocked at places like Olduvai Gorge, which is just incredible. They end with the conclusion down here where they say, we've shown that the stone tools used by chimpanzees in uh, Thai National Park and two communities for nut cracking possess a range of techno-typological and, er, and percussive damage patterns that differentiate hammers from anvils. Furthermore, these percussive tools differ from those used by chimpanzees in the Baosau forest. These differences are probably affected by the range of raw materials used as well as the different hardnesses of the hardnesses, yeah, different hardness, I guess, of the nut species crack. Furthermore, our analysis shows that these chimpanzees occasionally repurpose anvils as hammerstones, attesting to the long use histories of chimpanzee stone tools. Additionally, most of the anvils would remain in the chimpanzee archeological record. Um, and they finished by saying, in turn, this can be used to better understand the range of possible percussive behaviors undertaken by our Pleistocene ancestors. So the long and short of it is this study showed that we can actually identify the difference between hammers and anvils in the fossil record and that chimpanzees are very particular in their stone tool usage as well as in their tool usage in general. They are in fact in their stone age and have complexities to their stone tool use that have not previously been appreciated, such as the specific stone tools for specific types of nuts and the repurposing of anvils as hammer stones later in its lifetime. I think for me, this paper really pushed me to appreciate what we know about stone tool use and about tool use in general in living hominids and extinct hominids. After all, chimpanzees have a very broad toolbox at their disposal, and the majority of those tools are not stone tools, which means they wouldn't show up in the fossil record, would they? This suggests to me that hominins were probably using tools of some kind far, far earlier than we tend to appreciate today. It didn't begin with stones, and it didn't end there either. But it's pretty cool that we have another insight into the identification of specific stone tool uses using diagnostic characteristics in stone tool usage in non-human hominids today. And so my gentle and of course very modern apes, I understand this was something of a something of a spur of the moment video, but I hope you appreciated a very shallow look into tool use in hominids and tool use in hominids. Music